Dear viewers, we are the Wereldmorgen.be. That's a Belgian news site in the Dutch language since 2010. Among many things, we closely follow the struggle of the Palestinian people for their right to self-determination. Today, we are talking to Mr. Shawan Gabarin. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Director General of al Haq. Haq means uh, rights. It is a Palestinian human rights organization founded in 1979, making it the oldest human rights organization in Palestine. Now, at first, Al Haq focused mainly on human rights violations in the occupying uh, on the occupying uh, forces in the Palestinian territories. Today, it also works on women's rights, labor rights. Al Haq and Mr. Uh, Sabarin, uh, Gabarin, excuse me, have won many prizes as recognition for their work and dedication. It's important to state that. al Haq recently was one of six human rights organizations that were designated terrorist organizations by the occupying forces of Israel in October 2000, last year. Many foreign embassies declared, we will keep working with these organizations because the Israeli authorities have totally failed to provide any proof for their claims. Just a few a week ago, the offices of Al Haq and six other human rights organizations were raided by the Israeli occupation army. Archives were stolen and the offices sealed off. Mr. Gabarin, welcome. Please tell us about the present situation. How did it come to this? And what are your plans for the near future, for the coming weeks? And what can we do to help? Thank you. Uh, thank you for this introduction. Uh, look, in our point of view, this is a political decision. The designation is a political decision by Israel. After they failed uh, to silence us and to undermine uh, our credibility image through a continuing uh, for a long uh, time uh, smear campaign uh, against us, when they failed the state of Israel, they used its heavy political hands uh, to get us down, to close us and to silence us. Uh, that's how we look at their designation. We were not surprised, to be honest with you, when the designation uh, happened. Uh, <clears throat> for one reason, because it was part of the continuing uh, campaign. Another thing is <clears throat> the reason behind that, in our point of view also, the nature of our work, because we are working in the human rights field, we are defending the Palestinian narrative, we are defending the Palestinian rights, and at the same time, we are going after the Israeli criminals, because Israel, they enjoy impunity, they are committing uh, war crimes and the crimes against the humanity on a daily basis, and at the same time, they enjoy impunity. Uh, no actions taken against them, uh, no accountability, no one hold them accountable. And here we try our best because we do believe about a human rights and rule of law and international law. That's the case. Here, Israel, they couldn't even challenge our information. They couldn't challenge our narrative, our legal analysis. Uh, and they used, you know, the mafia, the mafia style, uh, as usual, as they do all the time. And in the same time, the oppressive uh, methods uh, to uh, silence us. Work in the human rights field, it's not a job. Work in the human rights field is a faith and belief. And we do believe of human rights, uh, justice, equality, all of these things. And I think they look at it as a soft, things. Maybe they look at it as a soft a nuclear weapons. This is even Netanyahu before he said that we're facing nuclear weapons, you know, but also in the same time, the undermining, you know, the image of Israel, blah, 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 all of these things. This is what we do believe, to be honest with you. And that's the reason, because we crossed the red lines for two reasons or three reasons. One, we go after the uh, international companies and businesses, those they make a business from the Palestinian suffering and the Palestinian, you know, uh, the Israeli crimes committing against Palestinians, like settlements, for instance, 
there are you know companies there are businesses they are making big business uh, there another thing is also we going after the israeli criminals we cooperate with the international criminal court and uh, we will continue cooperate with that uh, you know uh, looking for holding israel criminals accountable uh, this is this is also uh, legal the third one is the most important one is the narrative we studied we studied this occupation and this regime and we found legally and academically that this is an ordinary occupation this occupation is a colonial occupation with the nature of apartheid and we have been saying this in so long to be honest with you and these days these days the uh, most credible international human rights organizations regional organizations even national organizations they came to the same conclusion and now we have a common position in all levels I think this is concern Israel because they want us to be honest with you. They want us to, let me say, to go and holding our guns and go and uh, shooting here or there. It's easy for them. But the legal narrative, the justice narrative, the things like that, they can't challenge us. They can't challenge us. And I think because of that, uh, they use their uh, political heavy hands and they declare us and designate us as a terrorist organization because they use terror term, the term of terror uh, for political reasons. They use it, they use it. And it has no uh, basis, to be honest with you. And here, uh, the, uh, even the mentality of the apartheid regime, the oppressive regime, the colonial regime, sometimes they can't accept even, you know, to say you are doing wrong and you are committing crimes and you are criminals. And we say this, for us, we say this. Uh, and here I think it's not easy for them to accept all of these things and they came to designate us. No one, no one took, took them seriously, including also the EU, including EU members, including also Belgium, for instance, uh, as EU state, uh, they, no one, even CIA, the Americans, they didn't accept. And this is the first time ever in their history since 84 that they come with the narrative their uh, security stand behind and also politicians stand behind and no one bought this biazon and this rotten, rotten product called, you know, terrorism, terrorist act, actions, things like that. That's the case. This is the first time ever even including their close friends, because their close friends also, they studied the information they provided to them and they found it doesn't stand before any democratic standards or values or a due process or things like that. They studied it and they came with the conclusion. They respect their values, they respect their democratic standards, all of these things. And they came and said that clearly that uh, they were not convinced and uh, they saw that uh, there is no basis, it's baseless uh, information. But Israel, I think now they try to impose that on all states to say, hey guys, hey guys, hey Europe, hey Europe, we will not listen to you, we will not listen to your calls. You have, you have, even by force, you have to take what we said to you. We have to take our narrative and our story, even if it's false story, you have to take it. You have to accept it. I think this is the mentality that the Israeli uh, using uh, these days. From our side, we will continue work. It's not a job for us. It's beliefs, it's faith with international law, with justice, and we will stand strongly behind these values and these principles. That's the case. We know maybe we will pay a high price, personal price, everything like that, we are ready for that because we look at the work in human rights in Palestine mainly, it's not a picnic. It's not a picnic. We know it's long way, it's hard way, and we are ready to pay the price, even our life price. That's the case. I say to you, to our all friends, to everybody that we are standing, standing strongly behind what we do believe. It's this is our conscience, this is our belief, 
and we have to, ex to express it. They want us to stop express our uh, narrative, uh, our uh, principles. Uh, they want us to. They want to send us to stay homes, uh, stay at homes, and not say anything. No, we will say that in their face. We will say that to the media. We will say that to everybody, and we will not stop. We will not give up, and we will not step back. Thank you for this uh, declaration, Mr. Sabarin. Uh, I have a, a few uh, questions on the actual situation now. The Israeli army has blocked off your infrastructure, your offices. They have stolen your archives. Uh, do you get any support, uh, I mean, infrastructural support from these embassies and from other organizations to start working again of this, at this moment? Look, if I want to speak on behalf of al Haq, I am the director of al Haq. Uh, yes, they confiscated from other organizations their documents, even their seats, their chairs, their tables, even including they went to the toilet and they took, you know, even some <laughs> things in the toilet and they put it in the tracks. Uh, at Al Haq, I'm sure that uh, now they are controlling everything inside as a spy, a spyware. Uh, electronically, I'm sure they are advanced in that, you know, but they didn't take, you know, computers or something like that because they don't need it. They know what we do. I'm sure that they are controlling things. I'm sure that they are hacking, uh, let me say, uh, hacking, hacking yes. things since, yeah. since, so, since so long because of that. They're, they probably listen, they're probably listening to this conversation. No, 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 sure. No, 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 sure. I'm sure. I'm sure that they are listening. They're welcome. To them. Hey, hey, hi, hi, hi. That's you know. This is the case. And another thing is, uh, the people you know when they saw that Al Haq sealed early morning because they came to Al Haq on 15 past three, you know, early morning on uh, uh, Thursday. Yes. And uh, the youngs and the youth they start. Uh, throwing stones on them and blah, 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 and from their side, they used to shoot and uh, tear gas and all of these things. After they left, they stayed at al Haq around one hour, 20 minutes. And they left, you know, they left. After they, they left, the people, they go and they went to the, uh, the door, the main door, and they removed, they removed the sealed door they put, you know, and they drop it outside. That's when we arrived morning that uh, day at seven o'clock, we found the door of Al-Haq open. We entered inside. We sit behind our computers. We do our work. Today also, I did, we did our work. I received, you know, threats uh, yesterday uh, from them, calls, you know, from the intelligence, Israeli intelligence, or this is what how they identified themselves. This is how they introduced themselves as, you know, an officer in the Israeli Shabak. This is what they, uh, they did. Uh, I'm not sure if he is the right person, uh, but uh, he invited me, you know, he want me, and he threatened me if I, we, we continue our work, because Israel state, they declared Al-Haq as terrorist organization. Uh, it means that I am preaching the law, and uh, this is a crime, and they can uh, take, and he threatened me that we will take, you know, against you as a person, uh, a punishment, uh, we will arrest, uh, we will detain, and we will interrogate, uh, and we will do more other things. Here, you know, I became nervous a little bit just to respond to him, and I responded harshly on him because I don't respect the way how they are dealing and the treating with the people. We are Palestinians, we are human beings, we have our dignity, and we are ready to defend our dignity and our rights. That's the case. We will not let the uh, colonizers and the uh, occupation, you know, to teach us how to say and how to address our case. That's the case. They have, they them, themselves, they have to study things and to get the lessons from history. That's the case of human beings. Okay. Mr. Savarin, thank you very much. And uh, I, I must really uh, applaud you on your courage and your dedication. We hope we can help by uh, publishing this uh, video. I have to say it will take a few days because we are going to put subtitles in Dutch uh, on it, but it will appear 
uh, in a few days, and we hope it will help to get international uh, su support for your call. Thank you very much. Look, we've got uh, support, you know, by EU uh, countries, by your country, we got the support, but I think it's a time now for actions to push Israel back to, to dismantle their military order and their uh, minister decision. Thank oh, you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.